Hi, this is lesson uh, 4.2 on linear regression. Back in lesson 1.3, we actually mentioned the difference between a classification problem and a regression problem. A classification problem is when what you're trying to predict is a nominal value, whereas in a regression problem, what you're trying to predict is a numeric value. We've seen examples of data sets with nominal and numeric attributes before, but we've never looked at the problem of regression, of trying to predict a numeric value as the output of a machine learning scheme. So that's what we're doing in this class, linear regression. We've only had nominal classes so far, so now we're going to look at numeric classes. And this is a classical statistical method dating back uh, more than two centuries, I guess. Uh, and this is the kind of picture that you see. You've got a cloud of data points in two dimensions, and we're trying to fit a straight line to this cloud of data points, and we're looking at the best kind of straight line fit. Only in our case, we might have more than uh, two dimensions. There might be multiple dimensions. It's still a standard kind of problem. And uh, uh, let's just look at the two-dimensional case here. You can write a straight line equation in this form uh, with weights, W0 plus w one a 1 plus w2 a2 and so on. Just think about this in one dimension where there's only one a. So forget about all the things at the end here. Just consider uh, w0 plus w1 a1. That's the equation of this line. That's the equation of a straight line where w0 and w1 are two constants to be determined from the data. This, of course, is going to work most naturally with numeric attributes because we're kind of multiplying these attribute values by weights. Uh, we'll worry about nominal attributes in just a minute. So we're going to calculate these weights from the training data, W0, W1, and W2. Those are what we're going to calculate from the training data. And then once we've calculated the weights, we're going to predict the value for the first training instance, A1. The notation gets really horrendous here. I know it looks pretty scary, but it's pretty simple. We're using, the, using this linear sum with these weights that we've calculated, using the attribute values of the first test instance here, uh, and in order to get the predicted value for that. So we're going to look, we're going to get predicted values for the training instances using this rather horrendous looking formula here. I know it looks pretty scary, but it's actually not so scary. These W's are just numbers that we've calculated from the training data. And then uh, these things here are the attribute values of the first training instance, A1. That's the 1 at the top here, means it's the first training instance. This kind of 1, 2, 3 means it's the first, second, and third attribute. And we, write this, we can write this in this neat little sum form here, which looks a little bit better. Notice, by the way, that we're defining A0 the zeroth attribute value to be 1. That just makes this formula kind of work. Anyway, for the first training instance, you know, it might be this one here, that gives us this number x, you know, the predicted value for the first training instance of this particular value of uh, a1. And then what we're doing then, we're choosing the weights to minimize the squared error on the training data. So this is the actual x value for this ith training instance. This is the predicted value for the ith training instance. So we're going to take the difference between the actual and the predicted value, square them up, and add them all together. And that's what we're trying to minimize. So where we get these weights from is we get the weights by minimizing this sum of squared errors. That's a mathematical job that we don't need to worry about the mechanics of doing that. It's a standard matrix problem. Uh, it works fine if there are more instances than attributes. You couldn't expect this to work if you had a huge number of attributes and not very many instances. But uh, providing uh, there are more instances than attributes, and usually there are, of course, then it's going to work OK. If we did have nominal values, well, if we just had a two-value, a binary value, 0 and 1, we could just convert it to 0 and 1 and use those numbers. If we had a multi-valued nominal attribute, well, uh, you'll have a look at that in the activity at the end of this lesson. OK, let's do it then. We're going to open a regression uh, data set, cpu.arf. Now, this is a regular kind of data set. It's got numeric attributes. And the most important thing here is it's got a numeric class. We're trying to predict a numeric value. 
and we can uh, just go and run linear regression. It's in the functions category, functions linear regression, and uh, we just run it, and this is the output. We've got the model here, that's the class is being predicted as a linear sum. These are the weights I was talking about. So it's this weight times this attribute value plus this weight times this attribute value and so on. Minus, and this is the W naught, the kind of uh, the weight that's uh, just a constant kind of weight, not modified by an attribute value. So this is a formula for computing the class. And when you use that formula, uh, you can look at the success of it in terms of the training data, the correlation coefficient, which is a standard statistical measure, uh, is 0.9. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, and then there's various other error figures here that are printed. Uh, on the slide, you can see uh, the interpretation of these error figures. It's really hard to know which one to use. Uh, they all tend to produce the same sort of picture, uh, but I guess the exact one you should use uh, depends on the application. There's a mean absolute error, uh, the root mean squared error, which is kind of the standard metric to use, I guess. Okay, that's linear regression. Now I'm actually going to look at non-linear regression here. A model tree is a tree where each leaf has got one of these linear regression models. So we kind of create a tree like this, and then at each leaf we have a linear model which has got those coefficients. So it's kind of like a patchwork of linear models. And these kind of, this set of, in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six linear patches approximate a continuous function. So there's a method under trees with a rather mysterious name of M5P. And if we just run that, that produces a model tree. Maybe I should just uh, visualize the tree here. And uh, now I can see the model tree. It's similar to the one on the screen, on the slide. Uh, and you can see that each of these, uh, in this case five uh, leaves, has got a linear model LM1, LM2, LM3. And if we look back here, the linear models are defined like this. LM1 has got a formula, this linear formula for LM1, this linear formula for LM2, and so on. So uh, we chose trees uh, M5P, we ran it and we looked at the output. We could compare the performance of this. These performance figures are 92, 93% correlation, a mean absolute error of uh, 30 and so on. We could uh, compare those with the ones for the regular linear regression, which has got a slightly lower correlation and a slightly higher absolute error. In fact, I think all of these error figures are slightly higher. That's something we'll be asking you to do in the activity associated with uh, this lesson. So linear regression is a well-founded, venerable mathematical technique. Uh, and, uh, but practical problems often require nonlinear solutions. So uh, M5P, the M5P method builds trees of regression models with regret linear models at each leaf of the tree. You can read about this in the course text in section uh, 4.6. And uh, off you go now and do the activity associated with this lesson. We'll see you soon. Bye.